Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will talk about aggregation binding. Just as we can bind properties to models, we can also bind aggregations. And we will now create a new JSON model to hold our product list and bind it to the item segregation of our list. But this time instead of creating the model and the data programmatically as we did here for our inputs, we will use a JSON file as our data source. So I begin by creating a new file under our model folder named products.json and I simply paste my test data here which is a JSON object and it has an attribute named items which is an array of items and we just have some dummy items for testing. I will also share the link to this file in the GitHub repository of this tutorial series in the description. So we save and now instead of setting this model in the component file as we did for the input model we are going to do this in our manifest.json file so we go here under models after our resource model we create a new one named product and first we need a type which will be sap ui model json json model and next attribute is the URI and we simply point to our model folder and then products.json file we save this and by doing this inside our descriptor file we make sure that this model will be instantiated automatically and it will be again available throughout the whole application now let's go back to our list in app view and bind this items attribute of our new model to the item segregation of our list and how we do that is I will do it under the ID and we say items equal again we use the binding syntax so curly braces it's exactly the same first uh, we begin with the name of our model product greater than sign slash since our attribute is at root level items I will copy this and next we have to define a template that will be used for each item in our list and we will still be using an object list item so let's do it here after the header toolbar aggregation we say items and we say object list item now from the controller where we add new items, let's check which attributes and aggregations we have. First we have the title attribute. Let's begin with that. Again we are still binding some properties, so we are using curly braces. Again the name of the model greater than sign. And now since we are looping over an array, this items array here, we are not going to use this slash anymore we simply say name which is the name of our first attribute next we have a number let's do it in multiple lines and number will come from products let's see price Next what we have a number unit which is hard coded so no curly braces now and let's close this because the other ones that are left are aggregations first one attributes so we say attributes and we have two each of them are object attribute controls let's add those and they have a title and text properties let's see what we set those to title is hard-coded category actually so no curly braces text will be bound so we use curly braces products greater than and we used category so again let's copy this 
we will still see a key as we see in here but don't worry we will fix that in the next video and next attribute is release date let's copy that duplicate this line release date and the text is called release date should be the same for our JSON and lastly we have the first status aggregation let's also add that and since we are in XML now we can't use our JavaScript functions as we did here so for now I will just display the discontinued date here and this will also be fixed in the next video so we say object status and we have a text and state state we will add later like I said and for the text let's simply display discontinued date let's save and go back to our application and we can see all our items in the JSON model we can see the keys as category like I mentioned and the release dates since we changed this to the date object they look a little cumbersome but not to worry this will also be fixed in the next video and one thing missing is our first status so let's check if we did everything right first, first status object status okay we have a text attribute discontinued date okay we forgot to add the name of the model so product here now everything works as expected now let's go back to our controller app controller here and since we now have a model let's update our on press create new product to update the model instead of adding an item directly to our list so let me remove this part completely first let's access our model we say const o product model equals this dot get view that gets model and the name of the model is product next let's also get the items data from the model so we say cost a items equals all product model dot get property which is called items the next step is very simple we just add a new item to this items array so we say a items dot push and we already have all the data we need which is just here coming from our input model so we push a new one and then we set the items property on our model again with this updated a items array so we say all product model dot set property this time first the name of the property we want to set which is items next to value and it's called a items let's save go back and try to add a new one let's say macbook electronics 999 and just some dates here create and we can see it at the bottom of our list now let's go back and also adjust the deletion so here on press delete we are removing the item directly from the list and we will change this now we will remove the item from the model instead first again let's get a reference to our model so I say const our model equals this dot get view dot get model product now before we remove an item from our data we have to know its index in the list and how we can access that is let me define it const i index equals first we have the clicked item which we accessed here from our event object then we say get 
binding context which will give us some information about the binding of our item and in here we need to pass in the name of the model which is bound which is product then we say get path here to get the binding path and actually first let's see what this path looks like so I will simply log it to the console let's call this as path log it save let's clear the console let's click the first one for example so the binding path is slash item slash zero second one is slash item slash one and so on and so forth so all we need is this index here so let's go back name this i index again and we just want the last character after the last slash so let's split this path at the slash characters and since we want the last element of this array we just call pop and then we simply slice our items array so we say all model that get data and inside our data let's see we have our items array so we say that items dot splice at our index and we want to remove only one and since we have made a change to our data of our model we need to refresh it so we say oh model dot refresh we save if we go back and try to delete this red one for example let's remove let's remove wireless mouse and bread so it all works as expected now inside our controller we no longer need these dependencies so let's remove those status attribute and list item are gone and lastly let's see what we did for deletion since it's a little different from addition so in here we got our model and then here we accessed its data and then the items attribute then we removed it but for adding we did something a little different we called the get property instead of get data and then we got the items property directly second thing what we did different is the refresh of our model in here we manipulated the data we pushed a new one to the items array and then we just set property to update our model and when we use set property on a JSON model we don't need to refresh it but if we get a reference to our model data then change something on that without using the set property we have to refresh the model so our changes are reflected they both work the same no difference at all so whichever you prefer all right that would be all for this video and see you in the next video where we will talk about data types and formatters